So hello everyone. I hope you had a good lunch. Uh, hopefully you didn't eat so much that you fall asleep uh, after lunch. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about how to upgrade your application to a newer version of Java, Java 17, or even prepare for 21, which will be released in, uh, I believe, September or October this year. Um, but first, I, I, I'm curious. So what version of Java are you using um, in your projects for your company? Are you already on 21? <laughs> Trick question, of course. <laughs> um, actually, you can already use it. There are some early access builds. So I have another talk where I uh, created 68 examples of all kinds of Java tools and libraries. And I actually already tested them on Java 21 to see if they would already run. And actually, a lot of them already ran, uh, but some still caused some issues. But we'll come back to that later. Um, who's running Java 17 for customers? Nice, quite a few. Java 8? Yeah. Uh, older than Java 8? Someone? Yes, which version? 7? 6. Whoa, nice. So this is, more, I think, more or less what I see in, um, most of the times when I give this talk. It's like almost half on Java 11, half on Java 8, and then a few people who are even a bit further behind. Um, so you see this everywhere in, in almost every country where I, uh, where I come. Um, yeah, so my name is Joy Jansen. I work for ASMO. And I actually was here a long time ago at Vox Bucharest. I think it was the first edition in 2016. Any of you were at the first edition? Cool. Unfortunately, then I brought nice Lego trains, which I demoed. This time it won't be that exciting. So if you came for a Lego, you will be disappointed. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to just interrupt me in between um, or otherwise contact me later. The stuff that I demo is basically based on a GitHub repository where we created all kinds of examples and also showed like, OK, uh, if you get this exception, then probably you need to do this and this to fix it. So it's more like an upgrade manual to upgrade from Java 8 to a newer version. Uh, if you just go to github.com slash my name, uh, you can already find the project on there. Um, so a little bit of background. So I, I didn't get all this information from Googling. I actually did a lot of upgrades over the years from Java 8 to 11, from 11 to 17 for a lot of different uh, projects, of course, still if you encounter issues, you Google, um, but that's how it works, right? Or nowadays you use ChatGPT instead of Google because that's not cool anymore. <laughs> a little bit about the agenda, but let's simply start. So why should we actually upgrade? Uh, so basically, if you upgrade to a newer version, like a major version, for instance, from 11 to 12 or from 11 to 17, you get all kinds of benefits. And even sometimes if you upgrade to a minor version, like from 17 to 17.01, uh, for example, uh, you get all kinds of uh, upgrades there as well. Of course, not as big as if you do a major upgrade, but still. Uh, so you get security improvements, uh, also performance benefits. So your application probably will run faster on a new version of Java. Of course, depends on your application and you need to do your own benchmarks, but hey, it could be. And I think for us developers, the nicest thing about upgrading is that you can use those cool new features like pattern matching, multi-line strings, whatever is uh, coming out, eh? maybe even with uh, Java 21 Project Loom, all kinds of cool new stuff. Um, yeah, this I found somewhere on the internet. Basically, it compares a, a few different versions of Java. Uh, so let's see, the purple one, this one is Java 17, this is Java 16, and this is Java 18. So basically, it's getting quicker for each release. But you know how it goes with statistics. Don't trust them unless you falsify them yourself. Uh, really try it out on your own application because yeah, it can really depend on which type of application you have. It's, if it's like a batch processing application or more like a web-based application, it can differ. Um, there are also reasons why maybe you don't want to upgrade, apart from that your manager doesn't give you approval for it. Uh, so it can be quite some work. Uh, you need to upgrade your machine, your built environments, production machines, and stuff like that. Uh, which is sometimes is, uh, it's quite a bit of work. And what I also saw is that a lot of people are scared because they think they need to use the module system as of Java 9. But actually, most of the world doesn't use it, so you're, you can go without it. Uh, it's just upgrade your Java application, and then you can choose whether or not to use modules as well. In some cases, it has benefits. In other cases, it might be just a lot of work. 
Um, and the last point is that yeah, some projects, the software that is being built there is installed on customer machines. And maybe those customer machines, they still run on Java 8, and you cannot upgrade them because it's a customer machine. Uh, and there actually uh, is a workaround for that. It's called uh, multi-release jar. And how that works is basically here you have your normal let's say production code, so we have an application and a simple student class, and then for specific versions of Java, I can create other classes. So here I have a version for Java 17. And, but let's simply look at it from IntelliJ because that's a lot nicer than from slides. Um, so this is also in my uh, GitHub repository if you're interested in this. So I have this really uh, simple student class, so basically, uh, Constructor, it also has a is blank name, so it checks if uh, the name is completely blank with some Java methods, and it says that uh, it's basically a Java class. Um, I have an application which basically it, uh, it, it calls those objects and prints some information, but we'll come back to that later. And then I have one in the Java 17 package, and, oh, wrong one, not this one, and this, this combination. And here we see it's a record. So records is a new feature of Java 17. You cannot use it on Java 8. Um, but in Java 17, it makes the code a bit more readable. You also see the is blank name. Now I can use the is blank method on string, which was also introduced in somewhere between Java 11 and Java 17. I don't remember the exact version. And so we have two kinds of implementations, basically. Now what we can do, let's make this a little bit bigger. Is we in case of Maven, I use the Maven compiler plugin. Um, so I say, okay, for the stuff that I run on Java 8, uh, source and target is Java 8, that's, that's the normal code, which is in my normal directory structure. Then I also say, okay, I have some Java 17 code, let's scroll a bit. And here I say, okay, that's in the Java 17 directory. So I explicitly say which, for which code belongs to which version. And then I can basically simply package this application and uh, I already did that up front. And then I can run it in different versions. I use Docker for it. So uh, let's see which command was it. It was in here. Yeah, run. I'll make it a bit bigger and pull it up so you can see it in the back as well. So basically what this does, it runs that same Java application that I created, so it's one jar file that's being created on Java 17, and I run that application on different versions of Java. So in this case, I first run it on Java 11, and here we can see that the implementation Java class is being used while executing it. Then I run it on Java 17, and I see that in this case, the Java record implementation is being used instead of the Java class, all automatically. I don't need to specify things, it, it just runs. And then the same for Java 19, it also shows that I used the Java record example. I think somewhere should be Java 8 as well, don't know why it didn't show up this time, but it's there also somewhere. And so you see that from Java 17, all the newer versions automatically use the record feature, and all the older versions, they use the class feature. So this way, what you can do is, you, if you have, for instance, performance improvements in Java with specific methods, you can use them, make separate versions out of that, so that clients that actually have that new version of Java, they can get those performance improvements for free, and then the clients that are still on Java 8 or older, yeah, they still use the old version without the performance improvements, and they should basically upgrade, but you're still backwards compatible, you don't break their stuff. Um, of course, be careful with this, because don't write your entire applications in two versions of Java. It will be a horror to maintain. And you also need to make sure that um, the method signature, so basically all the public methods, should be uh, available the same on all the Java versions that you support, else you get weird errors. But luckily nowadays, your IDE already warns you if you, for instance, forget to add one of the public methods to Java 17, which you have in one of the other versions. So this is nice if you want to have uh, ah, some small improvements, I would say, not for uh, complete applications. Um, not this one, this one. Um, yeah, so uh, I explain it here as well. You can also explicitly validate it nowadays with the jar minus minus validate command. It basically validates your jar uh, file if it's correct. Um, what also uh, helps for me is I, I tried out a lot of stuff in Docker. 
Um, not continuously during the upgrade, but for instance, if you have certain issues. At one point in time, I got a really weird error while upgrading an application, and I had no clue what was going wrong. I spent like a day and couldn't fix it. I Googled for it, found no solution. So then I decided, okay, let's run it in a Docker container because then I have a clean environment. I don't have weird settings which I got on my laptop after using it for several years. It's just a, a clean environment. And then it actually ran without any issues. And then I, I tried to investigate it a bit further, and I found out that apparently we used some feature which didn't work on a Windows machine. And I had a Windows machine, all my other colleagues had a Mac or a Linux machine. Um, so it was actually not really a problem, I could just check it in and no one had issues. It was only on my Windows laptop. But I could find it out thanks to Docker basically. And Docker also allows you to quickly test your application on various versions of Java. Um, so yeah, why, why do I do this session? Um, what I often hear is that people find it challenging to upgrade a Java version. I, when I joined a company, uh, one of the teams, they created one application, so it wasn't a really huge application. And management asked them, like, okay, how much time does it take to upgrade it from Java 8 to 11? And they said, like, yeah, it costs us a quarter with a, po a couple of developers. Uh, you can probably guess what management then said. They said, okay, then we don't do it, because, I mean, what's the benefit anyway of upgrading Java? Uh, and they put it on a shelf. Uh, so when I joined, I, I also looked at it, and uh, yeah, you ha often get into a lot of discussions, like management will ask you, they also ask me, like, okay, make an estimate how much work it is, in this case, to upgrade 10 applications or something from 10 different teams. Yeah, I had no clue I, because I never worked on all those applications. So in the end, I told them, okay, uh, forget it, I'll simply upgrade it, and afterwards I'll tell you how much time it took. But luckily, I had a, a manager who was uh, quite easy with that. He simply said, you do what you think is best. Uh, unfortunately, that most of the time doesn't work. Uh, before that, I also worked in companies where I simply said, okay, Friday, my hours are basically gone. Uh, I quickly check if, my, if I can run my application on a new version of Java, and then I get a better impression. Sometimes it compiles immediately. You only need to fix some tests. So then you can say, okay, it probably takes me like two or three days. And then often management is more willing to give you that time uh, instead of saying, I have no clue, but probably it takes a month. So it, it can be a bit of a challenge, but most of the things that I saw is that uh, things are coming back in, in almost every project I, I, I saw. Of course, you always have some deviations, but a lot of stuff is, is generic. So I try to explain that in this session so that you can fix those things in your application and then maybe you have some small things left uh, that you need to fix yourself. Uh, I use Maven, but you can do this anywhere. So uh, let's get on this journey. Um, First, yeah, in the past we had those Java releases every three or four years, so uh, everyone fell asleep for three or four years, and then with a bit of luck we had a new version. Nowadays we have a new version every six months, and we have a long-term support version, first every tier three years, now it's even every two years. Um, if I look at it myself, so there were a lot of discussions, do you only use long-term support versions, or can you use any major version? In theory, any major version I is nice to use. You can use it, it's ready for production. But what I saw in practice is that nobody uses non-LTS versions for production systems. I don't know, is, is there anyone here who is using like Java 13 or 14? Uh, one guy, okay. So it, it seldomly happens, sometimes. <laughs> um, so in general, most people stick to those uh, major versions also because for the major versions, you get minor updates for quite a long time, basically until the next LTS is released. For the non-LTS versions, often the updates stop after the next one is released. So if you have Java 13, then as soon as Java 14 is released, you no longer will receive updates for Java 13. So you need to do a major upgrade uh, then. Some vendors offer some more support, but that's in general how it works. Um, so yeah, mostly uh, my advice is stick to the major versions. Uh, so far that worked out quite well. Um, but maybe yeah, there's some time, maybe after Java 21, Java 22 will introduce some really cool features that will help you. Yeah, then you can, of course, make the decision to immediately use it instead of wait for like one and a half years until the next uh, major release. Um, so what to upgrade? Basically, if, if I look at applications, mostly a team wrote some code and there are some dependencies in there. I also know of some projects where they basically didn't have any external dependencies. They wrote all the code themselves. That's another challenge, I would say. Um, and underwater, you have some Java runtime. So whenever something is changed in the Java runtime, so removed or something, you often have to do 
one or two things. Either you have to upgrade your dependencies or you have to upgrade your code or both. Depends a bit on uh, what, what is being removed. And often, as they say, a lazy developer is a good developer. Uh, the, often the issues that occur while upgrading a Java version, they occur in the dependencies that you have. Some dependencies are not compatible with the new version of Java. So if you have a little bit of patience, those dependencies, they are upgraded, and then you can simply use the latest version. From what I saw, I, I, so I test sometimes some early access versions, and then I find some issues, so I notify the developers of those frameworks, and then before the major release is there, they already fixed everything. So yeah, keeping dependencies up to date helps you a lot. Um, if we talk about stuff that's being removed from Java, um, that's actually often not directly removed. Often first they deprecate stuff. Uh, you're probably all familiar with that. For instance, JugsB, uh, it was a normal feature in Java 8, then for two versions it was deprecated. So if you basically removed it or replaced it in Java 9, you were well prepared for the release in Java 11 where it was actually removed. Um, and and what's being removed is, is really broad within Java. So it can be really small things like a method which is deprecated and then removed. But it's also stuff like certificates. If they are no longer trusted, they will be removed. So that's also a good reason to upgrade, else you still trust some certificates which are not secure anymore. Uh, but also more bigger things like a JMC, Java Mission Control, which you can use for profiling. If you never used it, have a look at it. It was part of the JDK before, now they removed it, but you can download it as a separate application nowadays. So it can be anything. If you want to look at the details about what is being removed, there are a couple of interesting uh, websites like the Java Almanac. It shows in, in detail what's being added and removed on like a method uh, level. Um, and, and you can get some more detailed information also on the Open JDK website and the Java uh, website. I can uh, show those. So for instance, here you see on a really low level, the Java Almanac. Uh, FuJ also has a, a similar one. Uh, I see they changed the link, but here you can also see the differences. So on a really low level, probably if you do an upgrade, don't start by reading all these changes, unless you have troubles falling asleep, because it's relatively boring. But if you encounter issues, for instance, the method doesn't compile anymore, it's really helpful that you can check, uh, okay, in this version the method is still there, but now it's being removed. Then you have the OpenJDK website, which for each version on a high level, they have, have the Java enhancement proposals or JEPs. They have these nice numbers that some people can remember out of their head. Uh, and otherwise you can simply Google them. Uh, and this is basically like high level changes. For instance, here you see that sealed classes have been added and that RMI activation has been removed. So these are the high level changes. You can click on them, get some more information. Uh, same goes for the release notes. This gives a bit, uh, yeah, more detailed uh, information also about stuff that's being removed, like certificates and stuff like that. And Oracle now also has <coughs> a getting started manual to help you with upgrading to a new version of Java. So there is quite some material available nowadays. Uh, then if you upgrade, often yeah, you still have to support your application on the old version of Java because you still need to fix some bugs. Uh, hopefully you don't have bugs, but most uh, applications have them. Uh, so you need to run two versions of Java at the same time. And there are many uh, options for that. Uh, I listed them here. Um, one of the interesting ones I came across was Maven tool change. Basically in Maven you can configure multiple versions of Java on your machine, and then within your POM you can say, okay, now I want to use this version, and then maybe for some other project or for the same project you update it to a newer version. It's a relatively unknown feature, but it helps quite well uh, with multiple versions. Docker is uh, quite helpful as well, but of course then you need to create the Docker container and it takes a bit of time, so while upgrading it's easier to have some integration within your IDE uh, to directly support a new version of Java. <coughs> If you never, uh, anyone here who never used Docker? I think most people nowadays have used it. If you haven't used it, it's fairly simple. You can simply create what's called a Docker file. In this case, I want to run it on uh, Maven with uh, Java 17. I can add my project and I can basically run it. And then I execute this command. The most difficult part of this command is the dot at the end. That's not the end of the line. It's basically the dot specifies the context, which means the current directory. If you omit the dot, it doesn't work. Uh, that's the most challenging part of building Docker. 
if you start upgrading, most of the time my advice is start on your local machine. So upgrade Java to the latest version and then check what goes wrong and try to fix it. And then afterwards, do the same on your build environment and your production environment. <coughs> uh, and then you can basically start with a recipe. And uh, as one of the starting points, it's, it's sometimes also interesting to look at, do I go for a big bang? I hear some people are still on Java 6. Do you go from 6 to 17? If you then find an issue, it's maybe like the needle in the haystack. Uh, it's, it's difficult to find. Well, if you do like one LTS upgrade at a time, for instance, first to Java 11 and then to 17, and you have an issue, then you can simply Google the issue and include the Java version that you're running on, and you can get some better feedback. I have to say most of the times I try to do it at once because I'm lazy, um, but then if you encounter issues, you can still make that step in between if you want to. It can help. Then there is one other part. So I said it's good to be a lazy developer because then your dependencies already fix those issues. But there are some dependencies who sometimes lag a bit behind. For instance, Apache Spark, it took a while before they released support for Java 17. So if you use um, tooling like that, yeah, you have to wait until, until that tool basically also upgraded to the latest version of Java before you can upgrade. But in general, if you use stuff like Spring or whatever, um, yeah, they support it really quickly. And if not, yeah, it's basically like this. You build all kinds of stuff on top of it, and then the stuff at the bottom doesn't work, and you're screwed. You simply have to wait. If you prepare, yeah, make sure that you update your IDE. Use the latest compile tools, also with Maven, that uh, you don't have some old stuff running around, old plugins maybe. Specify the Java release version, in this case for the Maven compiler. Same goes for Gradle, of course, to make sure it's, it's really building on Java 17 and not accidentally still using Java 8 somewhere. Then upgrading dependencies as I managed, I think that's the most important task, and it's often something that yeah, isn't done. People don't like to upgrade dependencies, so they stay on a really old version. Um, but it, it helps a lot. If your dependencies are up to date, what I saw is that then you hardly have any changes while upgrading Java, at least for the latest uh, versions. And you can actually have some tools nowadays for this. For instance, Renovate and Dependabot, you can run them and they automatically create pull requests as soon as there is a new version for your dependency. And then the only thing you need to do is you have to say, okay, merge this and you're done. You can even configure it that it automatically runs builds with that version so that you can even check if it builds before merging the pull request. It's really advanced and it helps a lot instead of trying to figure out each version manually by going to Maven Central and seeing what the latest version is. Maven and Gradle also often offer some plugins that allow you to display the latest versions, like, okay, this is your version and this is the latest available, you should upgrade. You can even do that automatically uh, if you want to with these tools, but I prefer the, the Renovate and Dependabot solution. It's, it's a bit nicer uh, if you ask me and it's even more lazy for us. But be careful if you upgrade to just the latest version of a dependency. If you look at, for instance, Judge B, if you upgrade to the latest version, it's 2.4.0, which is from 2018 somewhere. So it's relatively old. Um, and the reason is, basically, it was renamed. I mean, before, we all had J uh, Java EE, and now it's called Jakarta EE. And also, the artifacts changed. So you need to make sure that you now use that artifact, because else you're still on an old version. And there we again have plugins to uh, facilitate us with it. So there is the Maven and Gradle old group IDs alerter plugin, which basically says, okay, you now use these dependencies. Basically, there are newer versions of those dependencies with a different name, so you should basically use those. Um, then I also, I, I always advise to do these upgrade steps, do them step by step. I sometimes saw people who try to do all at once, so make your project compile, fix the test, make it run. Uh, but that can sometimes be quite cumbersome, and you have no idea how far you are. I always recommend start with compiling the source code. Then you can say, okay, I compiled the source code, so we made some progress. Now I need to uh, compile my unit tests and make sure they run. After that's done, you have to test it on some environment. But at each step, you can tell it to your teammates, but also to yourself, hey, I'm making progress. And probably I need maybe this amount of time uh, to wrap it all up. And when you're lucky, you get a nice pizza. Um, but now let's look into what are actually the big changes, the big things that have been removed in uh, the Java versions between 8 and 21. Uh, if we start with it, uh, JavaFX was removed. Anyone here using JavaFX? Yes, yeah, some people. Okay, cool. 
Um, so nowadays it's not a part of uh, Java anymore, but you can add it basically as a Maven dependency. And what you can also do is like, you have the, the Java, let's say, standard. So you can download OpenJDK that doesn't contain Java Vex, but there are some vendors who actually offer uh, an extended tool suite. So they also offer a JDK which includes Java Vex. So uh, for example, Liberica JDK, they offer uh, a JDK which is basically a superset of the standard JDK with extra tooling which still includes Java Vex. So that might be interesting to have a look at. Then the JDK fonts have been removed, and this was an interesting one. This was actually something a colleague enc uh, encountered during a project. He upgraded and then got some really weird font issues. And what is actually going on there? In the past, in Java, there were like, I don't know, like six fonts were available there. Uh, so then if you build an application, those fonts could be used. Those six fonts have been removed, and normally what would happen is that then the fonts of the operating system would be used as like a fallback mechanism that was already there for a long time. Uh, but if you use really small operating systems, we for instance use Alpine uh, uh, Linux and Docker images, those co don't contain any fonts. So then if Java doesn't have any fonts and the operating system doesn't have any fonts, you get really weird issues. Happens for instance if you use uh, Apache Poi to work with Word and Excel documents or other documents that apparently needed some fonts and then the solution is to basically install those fonts on your operating system and then you're again good to go. Um, yeah, as mentioned, so before we had Java Mission Control, that's now being, re uh, of there was removed. You can still use it, but then you need to download it uh, manually. Um, and I think the biggest change for most projects is that the Java EE and Corba modules have been removed. I hope no one is using Corba anymore, but a lot of projects have been using Java EE still. And what they're basically uh, changed is that like we saw before with the uh, dependencies, also the imports change. So instead of Java X, we now use Jakarta, and we need to add those dependencies because in the past, all that Java EE stuff was part of the JDK. Now it's out of the JDK, so you need to explicitly add the dependencies for it. And you can see how that works here. These are the different Java EE modules in the past, and on the right, you can see basically what the replacement artifacts are. Uh, keep in mind that for some of them, like JugsB and JugsWS, you need two dependencies one for the API, and one for the implementation. So this is, I think, for most projects that go from 8 to 11, this is the biggest change. I also heard some people say, okay, um, there haven't been many changes in Jakarta EE, so I, I simply import these Java dependencies. That's, of course, also possible. Uh, but now Jakarta EE is evolving a bit further, so I would really recommend to upgrade to Jakarta EE instead of adding these uh, uh, Java EE dependencies. Uh, then Java 15, um, they removed Nashorn. Nashorn is a JavaScript uh, engine. I saw it a lot of times in the past at conferences. They gave really cool demos with it, but I thought no one would, uh, was using it until I upgraded one of the projects and I got a Nashorn exception. Uh, and then I found out we were actually using it. And then the simple solution again is to add this dependency explicitly. Um, then in Java 16, they started with, um, yeah, they, they have a really nice name for it, but basically what's the case is you have some really low level uh, methods in the JDK, which were never meant to be used by us mere mortal application developers. They were only for JDK developers. But in the past, they couldn't hide them away. With Java 9, they introduced modules and they could hide them away, but if they would have done it back then, basically every application would broke on the planet. So they opted not to break it back then, but from Java 16, they, they try to make it more and more difficult to access those methods. It's like reflection methods and all kinds of internal stuff. Uh, so what's the solution there? Again, most of the time, it's a matter of upgrading your dependencies. Uh, I also saw it once where we used some reflection in a unit test, then I could easily rewrite that unit test without reflection. Uh, so if you use it in your own code, you might need to rewrite some stuff, but I only saw that in one of our projects, so in general, upgrading it uh, works. Um, and then, for example, Lombok, that really uses those low-level methods uh, that, that broke in the beginning, but they quickly released a new version which could handle these restrictions. Um, if you don't want to upgrade your dependencies, or you have some code which uses those internals, there is a workaround. So what you can do is, in the compiler plugin, you can specify these arguments, which basically says, okay, 
all these modules were closed, I want to open them again. It's super ugly. I mean, someone put a lock on the door and you simply remove the lock and say, oh, you can go in for free. But it's there, it's a workaround. Don't try to do it, uh, really try to fix it because I wouldn't be surprised if they make it more strict even in the future. And we already see that a little bit because instead of the previous option, you could also give the Java argument minus minus illegal access and then it would open up everything at once without having to specify all these things. So that's even easier, but even dirtier as well. Um, if you get an error like this, so here you see cannot access class, uh, uh, blah, 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 JDK compiler does not export, blah, 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 to a named module, then basically you encountered one of these issues and you should update your dependency or your code. Uh, so it's quite easily recognizable. Then in Java 17, they deprecated the, the applet API for removal. Still people using applets? I heard there are still uh, applications out there. They require special old versions of browsers because no browser nowadays supports it anymore, but there are people still using it apparently. Uh, experimental AOT and JIT compiler stuff has been removed. If you're interested in that kind of things, uh, you can use GraalVM, which is basically a more advanced version of it. Uh, you see, again, they did something with JDK internals and they deprecated the security manager for removal. So if you look at the strongly encapsulate JDK internals, they remove this option. Really nice. In one version, they introduce an option to open everything and in the next version, it is removed. Uh, so now you can no longer use this. So then what do you do? Again, make sure you upgrade your dependencies. They made sure that they had some, they have some new higher level APIs which you can use instead of those low level APIs. But unfortunately, you can still use that minus minus add opens to open up stuff. So th there is still a workaround available so far. I haven't seen that it's completely gone uh, in the newest versions of Java, but I would really recommend to make sure you get rid of these workarounds. Um, and then when you look, for instance, I, if, when I upgraded, so by now this is all already fixed for a long time, but just to show what kind of issues you might occur if you still use old versions of these libraries such as Mokito, here I have an enum with a test field with a method in it, and then I try to mock it, and then you see this issue. not really clear what happens there, but so basically I contacted the developer of Mokito and he said, I ah, yeah, will fix it. So it's already fixed in a really old version by now. Uh, but if you still have really old dependencies, then you could encounter these kinds of issues. Uh, same goes for the Kotlin Maven plugin. I also tried that when Java 17 was just released. Um, and then I got an error, which is actually quite good. I mean, they simply say unknown JVM target version 17, really descriptive. Simply means uh, doesn't work on Java 17. Funny thing was when I simply used an older version, it compiled perfectly fine on Java 17. Uh, but by now, this one is, uh, is also fixed if you use the latest version. If we do then look a bit towards the, f the future, so Java 21 is coming in like half a year. Or yeah, basically exactly half a year because Java 20 was released this week and we get a new one after six months. Um, so let's have a look at what they changed there and what we might need to change in our applications. And actually, so far, uh, it looks really good. Uh, they only deprecate some stuff, but I mean, deprecated stuff doesn't break anything. Um, and they, yeah, basically, you should no longer use the finalize uh, method. You should use what they call cleaners and the try with resources statement, which was already introduced quite a while ago. So instead of using try catch and try to close all the resources manually, you should use the try um, with resources. The reason is if you try to close two resources in the catch and in the first one an exception is thrown, then the second is also not closed. You can fix that with all kinds of manual logic, but hardly anyone does that. And with try with resources, the resource management is a lot better. So really make use of that uh, new feature. It's really helpful. Um, if you look at Java 19 and 20, so 20 was released this week, no major removals or deprecations. So that makes our uh, life easy while updating. And for 21, yeah, the content is not yet clear. It's still six months away. They are now basically selecting the first things that go in. Um, but I didn't hear of any major removals yet. So yeah, we have to wait uh, on that one. Um, then if we look at, uh, if, if you upgrade to 21, so I was crazy enough to use an early access uh, version, uh, I, I actually encountered some issues like this one, 
which is also quite descriptive. Okay, Java 20 is not yet supported by ByteBuddy. There are some reasons, but yeah, the people behind Buddy are aware of this and they're waiting on some other dependencies to upgrade, and then they can upgrade their part as well. So probably before Java 21 is released, this is all fixed. Um, and then I came across an, a really interesting uh, error message which I really didn't understand when I first got it. Unsupported class file major version 61. Anyone an idea what that means? The Java version is not supported indeed, but why does it mention 61? Because I didn't upgrade to Java 61. I, I tried, but it's not there yet. Y you know it? Exactly, yeah, there is a correlation indeed between the Java version and these really high numbers. So Java 17 has class file major version 61. It basically describes how the classes look. So it's not completely tight. It's not like going up one version every time Java goes up one version. That's why it's now already 61. But like for Java 17, the class file major version is 65. So it basically says, okay, yeah, this stuff doesn't run on your Java version. But then with a really weird number, which I didn't understand, but luckily we have Google, chat GPT, and stuff like that to, to help us. And, and you find this in all kinds of stuff, like the Jacoco agent that gave the same error for me back then. Um, different Maven plugins gave the same error. So this is a really common error that you probably encounter if you don't update first. If you first update all your dependencies and all your plugins to the latest version, you will never see this. Um, yeah, already explained this. So then, yeah, basically, we upgraded everything. And we're done, finally. We can celebrate, drink some beers, wine, or whatever you prefer. And then you can make use of all those cool new features, like pattern matching, multi-line strings, um, yeah, what's more in all those new uh, Java versions. So that's really nice. So it takes a little bit of effort to get there, but I think it's not as much effort as you think, even if you do it manually. I did most of the stuff manually, but nowadays you actually have tools to do this. Open Rewrite is an open source project. It's really active lately, and they provide some kind of recipes to do upgrades, basically. It's a bit like find replace, but then a bit more complicated. Uh, what they, for instance, support is upgrading from JUnit 4 to JUnit 5, the Jupyter one. They have a recipe for that. They also have a recipe to go from Java 11 to Java 17. Um, they have all kinds of recipes. They're really useful, so you can basically run that. You can see what changes have been made. And then you can say, okay, yeah, I like this, or maybe you say, I don't like this, I want to do it manually because I uh, want to spend more time on it, else I'm done too quickly and I don't know what to do for the rest of the week. Uh, but I would say do it automatically and uh, go drink some coffee or something. Uh, and, and this will really uh, help you with that. So I can really recommend that if you start upgrading, have a look at this tool uh, and see how it helps you. Maybe even if, uh, if, if you don't want to do it, um, what I did from, for instance, 11 to 17, I, I didn't upgrade anything. I was just lazy, I didn't have a lot of time. So I ran it on 17 and then looked, okay, what breaks? And then I noticed a couple of things that broke. From 11 to 17, it was Lombok broke, so I upgraded Lombok, and a few of my test dependencies broke, like Mokito and some other stuff. Most of those are using JDK internals, so therefore you need new versions. So I upgraded those test dependencies on Lombok. I had one failing test which used reflection, I fixed that one. And that was for, I think, like, yeah, I don't know, uh, between five and 10 different projects. And that was it. Then my entire project already compiled. I didn't have to upgrade all my dependencies, just Lombok and some test dependencies. But of course, it varies a bit on what stuff you use. And so if you look at the amount of work, if you go from eight to 11, uh, you need to take care of the Java EE to Jakarta migration. So that can be a bit more work. But of course, if you use open rewrite, that, that might also be quite easy. Um, if your dependencies are already up to date, it's almost no work. It's basically using a new version of Java, um, unless you, of course, use JDK internals yourself, then you need to fix that. Again, make sure that you make those incremental steps. And the most important thing for me is that uh, I often hear, and I, I was guilty of that myself, I, I complained, oh, management isn't giving us time to do these upgrades. I want to use a new version of Java, I don't get time for it. I, only, mm, are, I am only allowed to build all kinds of functionality, but I want to use those cool new Java features. And 
yeah, I mean, we can keep pointing to management and say, okay, why don't you give us time for it? But if you look at, at it the other way, for whom is it most interesting to have an upgraded version? I think that's for us developers, because we can then use those cool new features. And so maybe it sometimes also pays off to invest a little bit of uh, maybe your free time, um, spend like uh, one or two hours, see how far you get with an upgrade, and then you can go back to your company and say, okay, yeah, I, I spend a couple of hours, I think I need two or three more days. And then often people are quite inclined to say, okay, yeah, let's spend those two or three days and see if it's then fixed. Uh, so really also take your own responsibility in upgrading us. And yeah, make sure you start upgrading now instead of waiting until uh, Java 61 is released. Um, so yeah, time for questions. And if you have questions later, feel free to uh, catch me online or around here. Again, if you want to read it back or see some of the examples, look at the GitHub repository. Quite a lot of people already uh, are using that one. And uh, with that, I would say thank you all. <laughs> I see we have plenty of time for questions. So any questions? Yes. That's a good question indeed. So some libraries and frameworks, they have specific versions o that only work on some version of Java, or for each new version of Java, they create a new release. Uh, what you sometimes can do, what I did in the past, is uh, stay on the old version of Java, for instance, Java 8. First update those dependencies, because often they are backwards compatible. And then if you upgraded the dependencies, then the, the upgrade to Java itself is often a breeze. So it's often a matter of trial and error. Simply upgrade it in your current version, test if it works, if not, maybe you need to fix some small things, and then do the Java upgrade. That most of the time is, is the quickest one, and it's really hard to predict how much work it is. I, I did a lot of upgrades, I still cannot really estimate it. Hard figure for me is per project you spend, yeah, maybe max like a week or something, but it's, it's also part of it is waiting for builds to finish. So if you look at time spent for most of the project I upgraded, I spent like a couple of hours to one or two days, maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I did it a lot of times, so that sometimes also helps. But I, in general, I would say within a couple of days you should be able to upgrade unless you have some really complicated solutions that sometimes also happens. But Yeah, yeah, it's difficult indeed to estimate it. Yeah, yeah, most of the time I simply try it and, and then come back, yeah. Any other questions? Then I would, ah, yeah. That's, uh, that's indeed a good question, yeah. So the question is, what's the best time to upgrade after a major release is, uh, is being done? Um, I think if you look at it, uh, I mentioned briefly that look at the frameworks that you use, because some frameworks, they lag a bit further behind. In general, uh, for instance, for Spring applications, it's there on the day of the release. So uh, a lot of people say, okay, wait for the first minor update version. So for instance, for Java 17, they waited until Java 17.01 was released, which is, I think, a quarter after the major release. Because then, yeah, if there are some things found, they are fixed. But uh, yeah, I also upgraded applications immediately. I would say try to do it as quickly as possible, especially now, I mean, after two years, the next one is already there. So if you wait for more than a year, then you're already halfway through the, uh, yeah, the, the period that you can actually use it. Um, so that's in general my advice, because most of the time, we, un unless, yeah, we, we also saw in a project where we did really a hardcore, I don't know how many digits, comparisons and calculations. And there we sometimes saw that between a major Java version, there was a really small change, like one millionth uh, after the digit or something, uh, cases like that. But if you have a, a normal application, yeah, I didn't see any weird things while upgrading Java. So yeah, most of the time you can just do the upgrade. And especially now, yeah, if you use Docker and stuff like that, that, that's way easier. I mean, you update your Docker file and your build environment and your production environment are updated as well. In the past, you all needed to do that manually. It took quite a while, but...
then I, I would say thank you all and have a nice uh, conference. <laughs>